You can't just let I, kids I, of 24 go and buy all this gear in you're stores. You're going to kill more people with your policies. It's a ridiculous example. It's not, because it after is. they passed the gun control it's laws, ridiculous... the murder rates went up. Our friend Dr. John Lott is completely fearless, going into the heart of the hypocritical liberal media to calmly point out that outlawing guns just doesn't reduce crime. It just disarms the good guys. He was one of the reasons Pierce Morgan got the boot. Now, Americans are buying more guns than ever, but that hasn't stopped messianic liberals like former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg from spending millions of dollars in anti-gun propaganda campaigns. It's not just the political campaigns. The left is funding bogus academic studies into the supposed benefits of not owning guns. That's why John Lott, our friend and the leading scholar with a PhD himself, has created a crime research prevention center. For more on this new initiative and how you can help, Dr. Lott joins us now from Philadelphia. Dr. Lott, great to see you again. And by the way, I want to say congratulations. I think Pierce Morgan's temper tantrums against you, his personal attacks against you backfired and Americans said we don't like this gun grabbing Brit trying to rip up our Constitution I think his debates with you and how you crushed him are one of the reasons he's no longer on CNN well thanks I mean I, who knows uh, in fact I'm kind of miss him being on CNN because I think he actually did more harm to his side than benefit uh, I, it was amazing after I'd be on his shows, I'd get lots of hateful emails, but I'd also get a number of people who were strong gun control advocates who would say, you know, uh, I was really embarrassed by peers, and I'm going to go and read your, your book because uh, I at least wanted to hear what the other side was saying. You know, he had, he was so strident that the only people who really listened to him were the most diehard gun control advocates. So at least I had a chance to maybe get one or two brief facts in that they probably wouldn't have heard otherwise. Yeah, he kept trying to overtalk you, and he, I, I mean, I, listen, I know the temptation as a host, I do it myself, but he was trying to drown you out to use you as a punching bag, but you got through in your 10% of the talk time enough to make a difference. Uh, you know, I, I had the pleasure of, uh, of talking with you. We spent a week together on the Freedom Cruise that you were generous enough to uh, come on, but I, I want to remind our viewers who haven't had the benefit of spending a lot of time with you, that what's interesting to me is you don't just make the case from a moral or a constitutional grounds. You do the opposite. You take a purely scientific observational approach. You're not even saying, let's do this because it's philosophically right. You say, let's keep guns in the hands of private citizens because that plain old works. Forget morality, it just works. Right. I mean, that's the way I came to this issue. The bottom line to me has always been what's going to save the most lives. And, um, and I think that's the way most people in the middle of the debate go at it. You know, uh, they are willing to trade off freedom for safety. I think in this case, this is one place where both freedom and safety go together. That's a great point. You know, as you've said before, in these mass shooting sprees that happen around the world from time to time, they always end when the second gun arrives, either a policeman who comes 10 or 20 minutes later, or if someone on the premises, a security guard or someone with a private license brings their gun. So, you know, to disarm ourselves is basically to allow uh, the criminal to have a free reign. I mean, that, that's, uh, that's the common thread. But I want to talk about something positive you're doing. You are setting up an institute to fight back with genuine scholarship. Tell me a bit about that and how ordinary folks like me can help. Right, well, you know, as you mentioned to begin with, uh, Michael Bloomberg, he's literally spending hundreds of millions of dollars on funding these studies, as well as George Soros and uh, Barack Obama is uh, spending tens of millions of federal dollars now on funding research on on the cost of owning guns. Uh, a lot of it, I think, is just to make people fearful, unfortunately, in, in ways that are unjustified for having guns in the home. And I think they believe if they can reduce gun ownership uh, dramatically, it'd be easier for them in the future to get through even additional gun control laws. Look, I've done a lot of academic research over my life. I mean, I've been a professor most of my career. 
uh, and I want to have academic quality research that can go and respond quickly to these types of claims. And also, there's so many issues that are out there that still need to be investigated to go and study those types of things. I worry that, you know, they, they exaggerate tremendously the risks of having guns in the home, and they ignore the benefits in terms of people being able to defend themselves or their loved ones. What scares uh, me here, Professor. In the very ways that you're talking about. What scares me here is they're trying to corrupt the genuine science about guns and murders and crime the same way they've corrupted climate science. They're trying to take the raw uh, right. empirical observations out of it and replace it with advocacy research, which is not true science. They're trying to do to, to your research what, you know, the UN has done to climate science. Now, how can I help? I know you're trying to raise, is it half a million bucks or 300,000 bucks on Indiegogo? How much dough are you trying to raise? And what's an easy website for us to go to to get, is it, is, what's the website, crimeresearch.org? Yeah, crimeresearch.org, that's exactly right. And then you'll see a link to the Indiegogo, because I agree, it's kind of a hard name to go and, and memorize there how to spell it. So if you just go to crimeresearch.org, we're aiming for at least 300,000. Uh, there's myself, uh, there's a former graduate student of mine at the University of Chicago when I taught there, who uh, was recently the research director for the Department of Homeland Security, who's gonna serve as our research director. And then we have a couple other people that are gonna be working with us. Um, but, you know, we want to try to be careful in evaluating these things. We have to have data available in order to quickly respond. Unfortunately, the people on the other side, when they put out these studies and they get all this media attention, they're not willing to quickly share their data. Uh, in fact, it can take years to go and get their data from them to see what they did. So we have to be able to go and put our data together ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's because you know how the media works on these things. They go and get a story and. If you can respond right away, you may be able to have some impact, but if it takes you a month or two months to go and respond to a story, it's no longer news, and the media is no longer really interested in trying to correct the facts there. That's a, that's a great point. Dr. Lott, we're out of time today, but for folks who want to help support genuine academic scholarship to rebut the anti-gun propaganda of Bloomberg and company, go to crimeresearch.org, click on Dr. Lott's Indiegogo page. It's crowdsourcing. We're trying to raise 300,000 bucks to get his little David versus the Goliaths that are out to get him. I'm going to chip in 100 bucks tonight myself. Professor, thanks for coming on the show. We hope to see you again soon.